Good morning and welcome to BC 103, New Testament Survey. Last class, we, we studied on the Gospel of Matthew. I hope it was a blessing. So what was a learning in last class? What did you learn from the Gospel of Matthew? Each of y'all can share one point. It would be a refreshing moment for each of us. Y'all can unmute and share one point that you learned from the previous class. And, or you can type it on the chat. Rin, Sri Radha, what was your learning? You can unmute and answer. I'm going to ask everyone. Everyone will take turn to share what was your learning from the last class. Because New Testament is very important. We should at least know from the Gospel of Matthew what was our learning. Yes, please unmute Chira and you can share what was your learning. And we will not repeat our points, okay? Yes. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Chira. Matthew was a Jew and he represented Jesus as the king. Okay, anyone else? You can unmute, Anand. It, it, it tells about the kingdom of heaven. He shared about the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Vijay. Prince, the kingly connections are that he uh, portrayed. <laughs> okay, okay, Prince, and Vijay. It has more references from the Old Testament. Uh, may I? Can you hear me? Yeah, I mean, can you hear me? Uh, I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, the emphasis of Matthew is about uh, showing Jesus as king because as far as his uh, kingly, front front. kingly connection, you know, he was from the line of David and that is, sorry, somebody else speaking? Okay. Yes. Thanks, Nina. Yes. G Jesus. No, I, I, I just want to say that as far as the kingly connection, I mean, we know that, that he was from the line of David. But yesterday when we were looking at it uh, uh, in 20, Matthew 27, 27 to 30, the real thing of a king was because of his crown and scepter, and which we know was a crown of thorns uh, which was set on his head. So why he was the king in the true that sense of the word, but really the uh, things that they showed as far as the king was concerned was these things which he went through for us. So I was blessed by that. Thank you, thank you, Nina, for sharing that. Sri Radha, Rin. Uh, Matthew is the book of kings. Uh, here is mentioned that uh, Matt, uh, Matthew is mentioning that uh, this is the book of uh, kingly laws. Uh, Matthew's parents, uh, their dedication and um, their call that they had on Matthew when he was a small baby, uh, uh, when they dedicated him to the Lord, um, like how um, he would um, 
serve the Lord and that He is God's thing. The call never died and uh, it remained up, even after, I mean, after Jesus called him. And um, the other thing that I like was uh, like how um, Matthew wrote everything in detail because he was a tax collector prior to the call that Jesus um, called him. And uh, yeah, that's what I like. Thanks, Rin. Thanks, Rin. Nikhil, Vimal. There's a lot of nothing. <clears throat> Let's talk about. King and Kingdom, Vimal. Um, the Gospel of Matthew is written for Jews, and Mark is written for Romans, and Luke is written for Greeks. John is written for whosoever. And uh, uh, the Gospel of Matthew that talks about the kingdom and his and the king and his kingdom. Okay, okay, yes. The Gospel of Matthew talks about the king and the kingdom of heaven. Okay, thank you guys for sharing. Um, well, even before we could move on with the Gospel of Mark, can I request one of you all to please unmute and pray? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we come near to your throne, and I pray, Lord Jesus, as we are going to and give us more uh, thing, uh, give us more grace and Lord Jesus help us to learn more Lord Jesus we give you praise and honor in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen so let me share yes Sean please go ahead you can unmute and share we have Shiv Kumar also, Samuel, Prabhu. Please feel free to unmute and share about your learning on the Gospel of Matthew. And meanwhile, I'll try to project the PPT. Go ahead, Sean. My audible. I'm audible, right? Class? You can unmute. Sean, you should. It's nothing from our side. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I wanted to say that uh, I wrote about the synagogues last class that uh, there are places of worship located in different places in each city. Right. And uh, the people became churches in the time of apostles. What he said? It's about the synagogues, ma'am. Can you hear me now? It's full. Okay. What did Hello? you share? Yes, sir. Um, it's about the synagogues. Okay. Yes. Uh, I wrote that there are a place of worship located in different places in each city for worship and uh, they later became churches in the time of apostles okay yes sir thanks sean anyone else would like to share samuel prabhu okay Let's move on to our class. Okay, today we're going to study on the Gospel of Mark, which talks about Jesus as the perfect servant. 
Okay, what are your thoughts on the Gospel of Mark? Even before we could start, what are your thoughts on the Gospel of Mark? What does the name Mark mean? Mark means the name that Mark means polite or a big hammer. Okay, and we all know the author of this book. What's the author? Of, who's the author of this book? What's his full name? His name, full name was John Mark. John Mark. Okay, let's look into the background of who was. John Mark. So his full name was John Mark as per Acts chapter 12 verse 12. Acts chapter 12 verse 12. So this is a combination of Greek and Latin or a Roman name. So it may suggest that his father was a Roman and his mother was a Greek. So in which case he was most likely to be a Roman citizen. So his mother's name was Mary. We get to know from Acts chapter 12, 12. Okay, so little is known about her except that she had a, a big house where they used to meet for the church service. Seems to be very prominent figure in the early Christian community where there was a church gathering that used to take place in their house. So if somebody has got a big house, that means apparently was little on a wealthier side. And we also see that there's no mention about his father. The scholars suggest that his father would not have been a Christian or he was no longer in the home, possibly uh, not live. So there's a lot of emphasis to be is on the relationship with John Mark's uncle, that is Ba. Barnabas. Uh, we get to know uh, about this from the Colossians chapter 4 verse 10 that uh, Barnabas was John Mark's uncle. So the early life, when we look at the early life of John Mark, uh, we see that there's not much about his early childhood been mentioned in any of the scriptures or in the, uh, any of the gospels or in the epistles. But it is most likely that he used to be around, um, you know, uh, among the prominent figures in the early church. So he was most likely to be very close in the ministry of Jesus. Why? Because his mom was in faith. Okay. His mom was in faith. So some historians or the scholars suggest that his home was used for different activities related to ministry. They used to keep this house available for the ministry purpose or the people to meet in their home to worship God, to share the word. Okay, And some of the scholars also say that maybe they used their house as the upper room for Jesus and his disciples to celebrate the Last Supper. And uh, where the disciples waited, and also on the Pentecostal day, where the disciples waited for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, throughout the Gospel of Mark, we see that his name is not mentioned. So, most of the scholars say that it was a norm. In those days, it was a norm for the authors not to mention their name through the book. OK, so Bin said that um, there was an incident recorded in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verse 51 and 52. Can we turn to Mark chapter 14, verse 51 and 52? You see, it is written as, Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body, and the young man laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. 
So when Jesus and his disciples were in the garden of Gethsemane, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, so in verse 51 and 52, we see that uh, there was a young man clothed in a linen. When the soldiers held him, he left his cloth behind, he ran away, he fled. So the some of the scholars say, that because it is only recorded in the gospel of mark so some of the scholars say that this man who ran away from that place may be john mark okay because his name was not mentioned second it was the only he who is recording that incident so maybe it is the end. As per John 19, 26, we see that it was the customary for the authors not to leave their name in their book that they write. And also some of the biblical experience that we see. Uh, see that is, he returned to Antioch from Jerusalem with Barnabas and Apostle Paul after they presented the church with a relief offering. So there were some record about John Mark been mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles, especially in Acts chapter 12 onwards, you see uh, most on uh, about John Mark being part of this missionary journey with Apostle Paul and Barnabas has been recorded even in Acts 13 when we look at. Can we turn to Acts chapter 13? Verse 4 and 5. Acts 13. Four and five. Can I request one of you to please unmute and read? Vimal, do you unmute when you're reading? So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, it, they went down to Cilicia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Okay, thank you. So we see that he accompanied Barnabas and the Apostle Paul on their first missionary journey to serve as their assistant. And can we look into Acts chapter 15, verse 37? Acts chapter 15, yes, verse 37 to 39, when we look into these scripture verses, we see that he left the team and went home to Jerusalem early on the journey. So this was interpreted by Paul as a very serious negative on John Mark. Because later part, later part, we see that uh, uh, we see that in Acts fifteen thirty six to forty thirty six to forty, when we read that, uh, then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, "Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they are going." Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took John Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And then he went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. So when Barnabas recommended John Mark to be along with them in this journey, for which Paul was not comfortable, he had a very bad opinion about John Mark because he didn't endure with them in the first missionary journey. Well, there may be certain reason from John Mark's side. He was a young adult. He was also homesick. There may be different reasons. Okay, Some scholars say that he may be homesick, anxious about his mother's safety. And some say that 
he was very fearful because of the persecution and the perils that they need to endure during the journey. So those may be one of the reasons why John Mark would have left Paul and Barnabas in the first missionary journey and went back home because the missionary journey was not very easy for them for him to endure one who is too new in the ministry it's very difficult he could not endure uh, maybe they had to go through uh, uh, you know homeless nights or there was no proper shelter no proper food they had to walk long path they were persecution so he had to endure all this and for him to go through what he was going through, maybe it was too hard at that age. So he had to get back home, leaving Barnabas and Apostle Paul. But this incident caused a very bad remark on John Mark with Paul. So in the second missionary journey, when Barnabas recommended him again, Paul was very stern enough to consider him for the second time, thinking he might do the same thing again with them. But then we get to study about John Mark later part, how he grew in the Lord and turned to be more matured enough, of which Apostle Paul, who rejected him in the second missionary journey now, but later is considering him to be much profitable. We see that in the scripture. Let me turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. He says, Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry the same man who condemned him saying no you know okay if you want to take barnabas if you want to take john mark go ahead on a different direction and i'm going i'm going to take silas along with me the same man who refused to take john mark but at the later part you would have heard about john mark the change a remarkable change in his life and the way he served and now he is recommending saying that Bring John Mark to me because he is useful to me for ministry. You see, there's a change in life. There is a change in life. So that's one of the reasons why we should not be giving up on somebody in the ministry because Lord has his own way, the way he works in each individual. The, the maturity does not come with age, the experience, but then they grow in experience. Maturity does not come in age, but they grow in experience. So that's how John Mark turned to be more matured enough in the ministry where he, be he became very useful to Apostle Paul. Later in the tradition, we see that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 13. Say, she who is in Babylon, elect together with you, greet you, and so does Mark, my son. So here we see many believe that because of this unique use of his mother's home that was available, okay, Mark had a bit of spiritual experience. And also, he started to relate with Peter and serve along with Apostle Peter. So he believed to have... Uh, you know, uh, be along with Apostle Peter because the book that Ma uh, Mark wrote is usually called Gospel of Mark is also called as Peter's Gospel because it's generally conceded that Peter may have suggested some of the materials that has been found in the Gospel of Mark because Mark was the interpreter for Peter when he was at Rome. Mark was the interpreter to Peter when he was at Rome. So most of the material that has been noted down, noted down in the Gospel of Mark has been shared by Apostle Peter. So that's one of the reasons why they, they, the scholars call Gospel of Mark to be the Peter's Gospel. 
So it is believed that after his work with Peter at Rome, he went to Alexandria and Egypt and helped to establish the church there. So while in the work that he was sever severely persecuted later part, later part, the scholars say that John Mark was severely persecuted and tortured to an extent where he was tied behind a horse and dragged into the city. And he was jailed many times. But all these things never stopped John Mark from serving Jesus or sharing the word. He was not wavering in his faith. What happened in the initial days made him only grow stronger. And he, he was a man of determination. So this man grew to be more mature that he could endure anything for Christ. Anything for Christ. So some traditions say that he was martyred by being burnt during the Nero's reign. So this would have happened because during the Nero's reign when, uh, you know, uh, Peter and Paul was executed. So after that, even John Mark was executed during Nero's reign. So being said that, let's move on to the next phase about the book. When was the book Gospel of Mark written? So many scholars believe that it was the first gospel to be written during the early days, about 57 to 59 AD, and some of them say about 61 AD. So whichever season or time it may be, but it was the early gospel that it was written and most scholars believe that he wrote it to Roman. He wrote it for the Romans. Uh, Mark gospel covers approximately four years the life of Jesus from the ministry of John the Baptist to the ascension of Jesus. So these are the certain points that we need to remember that gospel of Mark was written when he was in the Rome and Mark's gospel covers approximately four years life of Jesus from the ministry of John the Baptist to the ascension of Jesus. And the gospel of Mark has about 16 chapters. And the main theme of this gospel, the main theme of this gospel is Christ, the tireless servant of God and man. The main theme of this gospel is Christ, the tireless servant of God and man. So to whom was this gospel written? Yes, as I said, it is written to Romans. So, so he, his desire was to show the Romans that Jesus was God's servant acting under the authority of God, where we see most of the time in the Gospel of Mark, we see he gives immediate and full obedience to all his commands. So there are several incidents that covers in this book that it denotes that this gospel was written to the Romans. One such was, since it was written to the Gentiles or to the Romans, we find only the actual very few quotations from the Old Testament been mentioned in the gospel. Uh, it talks about John the Baptist and not Jesus. So this is an amazing contrast when we compare it to the book of Matthew, because in the gospel of Matthew, we see he covered most of the Old Testament. There was a comparison of Old Testament scriptures, whereas in the gospel of Mark, we see very few of Old Testament scriptures been noted. And also we see that Mark omits much of the preaching, but he records much of the action. So we see Jesus very clearly focuses on the action, action side. So for this is one of the reason why the book size, when, when we compare to book of Matthew to gospel of Mark, Matthew had about 28 chapters. And in gospel of Mark, it's only 16, so much lesser. And notice there's a key word in the Gospel of Mark that is immediate. Let me turn the slide. See, Jesus is always into action, immediate. Okay, we see that the Greek word for immediate is euthes. 
which occurs 42 times the gospel of Mark. Whereas in Matthew, it occurs only 15 times and eight times the gospel of Luke and, and only four times in gospel of John. So we see Mark is trying to portray Jesus more on the continuous action when compared to the other book. So what happens here? We see always as an action, breaking of the roof and bringing down the paralytic man. And then we see Jesus going to another paralytic man near the pool of Bethesda. Then we see Jesus, you know, doing all the hard work, labor. See, I've taken a few of the uh, pictures which is available from the chosen series. It's not that I'm promoting, but I'm just trying to uh, portray some of the recent pictures for us to relate and understand. Yeah, this I come later. You see Jesus on continuous action and move. Okay, so Mark gives a translation of certain Aramic words that the Jews would have known. When we turn to Mark chapter 4 verse 41, let's turn to Mark chapter 4 verse 41. It says, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? So Jesus goes and, you know, speaks to the wind and the sea, he calms it down. And uh, in Mark chapter, I think there's a scripture reference. I didn't get it correctly. Just give me a minute. Okay. Okay. It's here. It's chapter 5, verse 41. Chapter 5, verse 41. Mark chapter 5, verse 41, where we get to see, uh, you know, Mark use an Aramic word, which says, uh, then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita Kumi, which is translated as little girl, I say to you, arise. So here we get to see that he is relating to the Roman crowd and using all these words for, to help them understand. And some scholars also say that Mark often gives a Latin version of certain uh, normal Greek words where it suggests about the Roman uh, orientation. So the term that Mark used for the basket in 421, 421, he said to them, is a lamb brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? It is not to be set on a lamb stand. So here, certain words that he uses are mostly termed into a Latin version, where he also uses in chapter 12, verse 14 for the taxes, and then later in 15 chapter, he used it for a centurion. So these are the Latin version of these words, which is only used in the Gospel of Mark. We also see that um, Mark seems to feel the need to give a geographical description for the Mount of Olives and Jordan was a river where you don't have to explain all this if he was writing to Jewish crowd because they already knew. But because he is writing to a Roman crowd, so he had to mention all these. So Mark also omits few references to the Jewish law because that may not impress the Roman, that may not interest the Roman crowd. So he tries to omit all these Old Testament references in his book. So what was the purpose behind Mark writing his gospel? So you see that Mark gives a remarkable statement of the purpose as the other writers. So his basic purpose seems to have been to win the converts to Christian faith by presenting Jesus of Nazareth as the perfect and the faithful servant of the Lord. He immediately, in the whole gospel, when we read that, shows that, that he is immediately acknowledging that Jesus is the Son of God. Because in the very first chapter, first chapter, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, he mentions that, mentions that the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, son of God, is relating 
Jesus of Nazareth is none other than Son of God. And then he shows to be, uh, he shows that Jesus was a suffering servant and he was willing to sacrifice for the sins of mankind. So, in this portrayal of Jesus, he focuses on two things on both the mission of Jesus' ministry and also that he is here to give his life as a ransom, as a sacrifice. So, in the first half of the book, first half of the book that is from chapter 1 to about chapter 8 we see that Jesus serving others by ministering to the human needs human needs he goes voluntarily he goes and meets every need and in the second half of the book that's from about um, yeah maybe uh, mark 11 to to the last chapter 16 he focuses more intently on the suffering of Jesus, on the suffering side of Jesus. So Mark 10, let's turn to Mark 10, 45. Mark 10, verse 45. Can I request Anand if you can read? For even the Son of Man came. Okay. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. Many. Thank you. This is the main scripture for this book. A main point that G Ma uh, Gospel of Mark, John Mark makes it. That is, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And gave his life as a ransom for many. So, what is the speciality that this book denotes? That is the book of a servant. What is that it's setting apart that this book is a book of a servant? Anyone from the class? The first indication when we studied about the four gospels, you know, in the introduction to the four gospels, what did we study? We studied that this gospel of Mark has no indication of genealogy because no one are interested about knowing the genealogy of a servant. So there is no genealogy, there is no birth record of the adoration of the wise men or, uh, you know, the pre existence of. The life of Christ. So, as a servant, genealogy is no important to the Roman Roman mind. Why should when a Roman is reading for him, Jesus is no one? So, why should he be interested in knowing the genealogy of Jesus? So, there's no real value. So, John Mark omits that. He just jumps right into the action part, the work that Jesus did when he was there and he also focuses on the work of the serving rather than preaching and talking there were so many sermons that jesus said which uh, the gospel of matthew spoke about the sermon on the mount multiplying of the food here we see john one does not talk about any of such preaching but he mentions the action how jesus came to serve and suffer. We also see that Jesus performed miracles that he would often instruct those who touched to tell no one in this book. Because servants do not get a lot of credit for what they do. You got it? So that may be one of the reasons, you know, John Mark makes sure, like, you know, whenever Jesus did a miracle, John Mark actually notes that Jesus said, do not tell this to anyone. So the servants do not get any credit for what they do. So Jesus' ministry at the time left him no time to eat. He was so tired, but still he went beyond, uh, you know, beyond his own needs to meet others' needs. That's what the servants do, isn't it? 
they don't give the priority for themselves but they give priority for the others need and serve others there are some other things that are very strangely absent in this gospel that is there is no reference to judgment of christ and the king throned in glory so even in the garden of gethsemane there's no reference of his ability to call forth the angels for his rescue or uh, you know we see in the other gospel where uh, you know when jesus prayed the angels came and strengthened him that has not been recorded and in this commission he gives no reference to his having all power and authority he just you know, makes it very simple so the book ends with jesus still working with his followers jesus still working with his followers let's turn to mark last chapter that's chapter 16 We'll read 19 and 20. Can I request one of y'all to please read? Rin, can you read? So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Thank you. So the book of Mark is indeed important because the world needs to see a Christianity that is more than speaking. So they need to see Christ in action through the lives of those who bear his name. So they need to see an army of believers who live to serve and touch and felt the need of the world. So as we discuss this, there are a few concerns about this last chapter, the book of Mark. What are they? Many scholars believe that Mark 16, verse 9 to 20, Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 20, or mostly, uh, most, most of the scholars say 15 to 20. Okay, 15 to 20 should not be included in the book of Mark. Mark 16, verse 15 to 20 must not be included because the reason behind this has to do with the fact that some of the old manuscript dating back to the 4th century do not contain these verses, 15 to 20. So most of them end with verse 14. They do not have 15 to 20. The reason is, it's interesting that the greatest conflict comes over the verse dealing with the supernatural commission of the disciples. So the scholars explain that some feel that since Mark ended the gospel abruptly, later some scholars or writers have filled the gap leading to the other gospels to have a completion towards this gospel so they believe that these uh, scriptures of about six verse was added much later by the other scholars to give a complete completion of this gospel comparing to the other gospel so some feel that the manuscript would have omitted the verses reflected uh, the fact that the last verse were dropped because they posed a theological problem relating to the expressions which was later added but whatever the case is it is for us to it is important for us to understand that all things mentioned by christ in this commission are confirmed in other places in the new testament and so we can consider these scriptures so that's one of the reason why canon accepted these scriptures and made a note of it to bring a complete completion conclusion for this gospel so with that i end this session of gospel of mark and next session we will go through the complete story of the gospel of mark in a story form for us to understand and remember okay these were the certain facts that we discussed in this class 
okay so i hope you all would have made a note so that we can discuss next class at least each one of you all should share one point which is unique i don't want any repetition but one point to be shared in the class so it helps us to refresh and learn okay with that we will end the session with a word of prayer dear god we thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, thank you for this time that you bless us. Lord, I lift up each of us in this class into your hand who have joined now and would be joining later. We pray that, Lord, us as we study the Gospel of Mark, the heart of the servant will be implemented to our hearts, O oh Father, for us to understand and know and come to a place that to have this attitude to serve, Lord. Because the scripture says that we are not here to be served, but to serve others. Consider others better than ourselves. Lord, I pray that this gospel will change a heart and mind and help us prepare to serve others the way you wanted us to serve, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Class, I request you all to please go through the scripture, the gospel of Mark, so that we can understand as we study. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all next week. God bless.